This is Brian Kelly. You'll often find him traveling. I've been to Ghana now 10 times, and I got to visit Liberia. Took my parents to South Africa. I love flying Emirates first class. It's gaudy, it's gold, you get caviar, and I have never paid for it. So Brian traveled to all these places basically for free, and he did it using credit card rewards. Banks promise offers like cashback, bonus miles, and cash bonuses to get you to sign up and spend. And it's rewards like these that people like Brian have become masters at maximizing. Ultimately though, someone is paying for all these credit card rewards, and there's a hidden battle going on over their future. During the Great Recession, some of the biggest U.S. banks, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, and Bank of America, had a problem. They weren't making as much money from mortgages. So they shifted their business to credit cards. And in order to get customers to sign up and spend on their cards, they offered bigger and better rewards. In 2011, we saw our first ever 100,000 point offer. Chase offered on a British Airways visa. 100,000 points for a credit card, it was wild. And really, I think what JP Morgan Chase was doing was thinking we gotta focus more on consumer lending and not just on that corporate lending um, or even mortgages. As banks expanded rewards, more people started using rewards cards. By 2018, 92% of all credit card purchases were made on rewards credit cards. That's up from just 67% in 2008. But it's not the banks that ultimately pay for these rewards. So when a customer uses a credit card to buy something, the store is charged what's called an interchange fee. And that fee is a percentage of the total sale. It's the bank that issued the card that collects the interchange fee. And it's this money that they heavily rely on to pay cardholder rewards. They're making money on your annual fee and on interest. But the big way with these premium credit cards is the interchange fee. That's the bread and butter. Interchange fees aren't the same across all credit cards. Cards with low rewards typically have an interchange of about 1.5% of the purchase price, while cards with bigger rewards can have an interchange fee of nearly 3%. And the divide between these two types of cards has increased. Banks can make about 25 cents more per average purchase if the customer uses a premium rewards card over a basic one. In 2017, retailers paid card issuers $43.4 billion in interchange fees. So it's no surprise that stores aren't a huge fan of these credit card rewards. They don't really want to pay for your free trip to South Africa. Most stores don't have negotiating power over these interchange fees. Payment networks like Visa and MasterCard require them to honor all cards, which means that they have to accept both low-fee and high-fee credit cards. And as a result, some stores reported that they've increased retail prices in order to make up for the cost of accepting credit cards. Which means even if you don't have a rewards card, you may still be paying for those rewards. So if you're using cash, you're basically paying for my points. So it can be argued that people who can't obtain credit, you know, those with lower incomes are uh, basically funding the system for others. Others will say, well, the merchants get paid more, they get paid on time, there's less theft when people use credit cards. So uh, it's an interesting ecosystem. I won't get into the ethics, but I will maximize my part of it. Some major retailers have indicated that they'll challenge the Honor All Cards rule so that they can reject cards with higher fees. And if stores succeed at driving down interchange fees, banks are likely to respond by chopping rewards. This isn't a hypothetical outcome. When credit card interchange fees were capped at 0.3% in Europe, banks responded by cutting rewards. For now, with so many credit card rewards out there, it's hard to know which deals are better than others. But with the cost of these rewards built into the things that we buy every day, just using a rewards card at all can be beneficial. If you're using a debit card or God forbid cash for purchases, you're literally leaving points and money on the table. It's like throwing money away every time you use cash. So get debt free, get disciplined with your finances, put your expenses on each month, pay them off, earn the points and avoid interest. That's how you win at the points game. So Brian Kelly, the credit card rewards expert in this video, had a lot of great tips about how to get the most out of your credit card rewards. 
We didn't have time to include them all in this video, but I wanted to share them with you in a video extra. You can check out those extra tips at the Vox Video Lab. If you haven't already heard, we've launched a paid membership program right here on YouTube called The Video Lab. For a monthly fee, subscribers get access to tons of special features, including these tips on credit card rewards. So if you're not already a member and you're interested, head on over to vox.com forward slash join to sign up.